clock on the wall is a couple minutes slow. So uh, this is the Breezy Point City Council. It's April 1st. Uh, first order of business is the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Welcome everybody. We have kind of a lengthy agenda for tonight, so hopefully we can uh, get through this pretty quickly. Uh, our first order of business is the consent calendar. You have before you the council minutes from March 4th, the uh, approval of claims totaling $94,480.80, which includes electronic checks 2276E through 2277E, Paper checks 135036 through 135068 and 135080 through 135100. And we also have a, a routine uh, approval of the <coughs> offsite gambling permit for the uh, Minnesota JCs, which are going to be having a convention at the uh, Breezy Point uh, Resort. And so uh, they wish to do some. Uh, uh, off-site uh, gambling and this, this is something that we do periodically uh, pretty routine is there anything anybody would like to have off the uh, consent calendar and discuss separately uh, Councilman Maroney no Gary no Rebecca yeah Gary notion okay all those no. in favor move so moved <laughs> all those in favor of the consent calendar please say aye Did you aye, aye. A second, sir? the what a motion and a second oh yeah I'll have a, mo can, a motion to approve the consent calendar as written. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Um, uh, all those in favor of the consent calendar as written, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, the consent calendar is approved as written. Um, the next item of business is something I really enjoy all the time. Um, and when I say all the time, the city of Breezy Point is blessed beyond all measure for their police department. And uh, Officer Lorch, would you please come up? to recognize tonight um, Chief Mershman mm -hmm. 28 years in the force and uh, we're gonna have some uh, cake afterwards so uh, <laughs> stick around and uh, we will uh, continue to honor the chief as he has been serving the uh, city of Breezy Point so faithfully for all this time we so just they have to stay around for ice cream afterwards absolutely so right. don't miss it yeah <laughs> Well, we have some exciting things to 
to go through. And uh, you know, number one is going to be our audit presentation. I've been looking forward to this for a long time. <laughs> um, but the next uh, next item of business is the uh, open forum. Anybody wishing to uh, bring anything before the city council may do so at this time. And uh, so come up to the microphone, state your name and address, and then you can address the uh, city council on any topic whatsoever. And uh, we can't, we not, won't necessarily be able to make any uh, decisions or anything, but uh, we would like to hear from you. Anybody for open forum? Nobody appearing? Uh, okay, we'll close open forum. And the next item will be our uh, audit report. And so, you know, Clifton, Larson, yeah. 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 Good evening. Yeah. Uh, my name is Danny Locke. I'm with Clifton, Larson, Allen. And I'm here to present the financial statements and our audit results for the city. Uh, next slide, please. So today we'll cover um, the required communications as required by audit standards the audit results, some financial statement highlights to the funds, as well as some key issues in summarization. You've all received required communication already in a separate letter, um, administered to you guys. And then I will cover some of just the highlighted topics <coughs> of that communication. First off, the city has received an unmodified or clean opinion for the current year. That just means you've passed your audit. We have no material audit adjustments. There were some two compliance and internal control over financial reporting, material weaknesses that were required to report, one being segregation of duties due to the small number of staff at the city. We see this at all of our clients, as well as the auditors draft the financial statements and notes to the financial statements. Again, this is very common for all of our clients, nothing out of the ordinary there. We had one Minnesota legal compliance finding, and that was out of seven checklists for Minnesota legal compliance, we had one noted notation, and that is the delegation of authority of electronic funds transfers. That was resolved since the audit took place, so as the staff was notified, it came to the board's attention and was resolved already. So that'll be clear next year. Um, in talking with some of the financial results as we move on to the governmental funds and the revenues and disbursements. In 2018, we saw an increase in revenues due to the levy increase as well as the developer's deposit for the new TIF district. Keep on going, we're having some problems. We'll, we'll catch <laughs> up to you. And then in the 2018, we saw a slight decrease in the disbursements in governmental funds for the year as was expected. Looking on to the months of disbursements in the general fund balance. So next slide there. Um, the Minnesota Office of the State Auditor suggests a five month general fund expenditure in um, unassigned fund balance. Mm -hmm. And the city has 10 months, which is what we like to see, right. more than five months. That five months standard being that's when you receive your tax levy dollars. And then as of December 31st, 18, well above that target. Yes. Moving on to the general fund revenues and disbursements. <clears throat> there was an increase in revenues due to the levy, which was offset by a decrease in special assessments. So overall, there was a decrease in revenues year over year. However, you ended with the year 209,000 above that general fund revenues guideline. There was a decrease in the disbursements due to the road maintenance project being moved to the capital loan fund. And then you were approximately 133,000 under budget in those general disbursements. And then as mentioned, you have the 10 months of the operating expenditures and unassigned fund balance, which is well above that target. <laughs> Debt service funds. Revenues decreased in the current year due to the slight decrease in that special assessments, which was as the city had predicted. And disbursements decreased in the debt service fund because of the decrease in the overall um, interest expense and interest, interest rates. Looking at the revolving capital fund revenues and disbursements, revenues from the special assessments and park dedication fees increased the revenues 
in 2018 compared to those other <coughs> years. And the disbursements related to the work, road work being completed, that was why we saw the increase in disbursements there. Looking at the cemetery fund, very similar to the other funds, revenue decreased due to the decrease in the miscellaneous revenue, but we ended the year about 11,000 above that budget target. And then there was a increase in disbursements due to the well disbursements, which ended the year about 5,000 over budget. And then looking at economic development, the revenues there are all from those taxes and disbursements are related to that new TIF district, White Birch, that was set up in the current year. But um, it was on budget for both revenues and expenditures at year end. Any questions on those funds at all? Any questions? Looking at the sewer, very similar year over year. No significant changes there. Um, we had a slight increase in disbursements at the end of the year for the city because of the sewer panel repairs, mm -hmm. but that was expected by the board. And then you were able to meet all debt service requirements and fund the internal repairs. Each year the city has been doing really well in paying down their debt service. So I'm on page 13 there. The regular debt payments are being made on time and then decreasing the total balance. Your expected date of payoff of the debt is in 2024 and you're well on target to reach that. And then in total cash, cash increased throughout the year due to some of those governmental fund increases, the White Birch TIF district, and you're well above where we're expected there. So should be able to meet all those debt requirements in the future with no hesitation. Um, the financial statements themselves, all were submitted on time and on deadline to the Office of the State Auditor. And that was at March 31st, 19 deadlines so the last week, but those were all made. Your sewer fund had an increase in cash flows from the operations in the current year, which helped them pay those repairs. Overall, the city has a very good financial position and <coughs> we saw increases in general fund fund balance of approximately 355,000 at year end. There was a debt service fund cap. Debt service fund had cash fund balance of approximately 252,000 at year end, which will then help pay those future debt requirements. Mm -hmm. The revolving capital fund had an increase of approximately 343,000 and 2,287,000 in fund balance. We had a new fund in the financial statements this year because of the White Birch TIF district. We set up a new fund to help track those expenditures in this current year. And then the sewer fund had that increase of 201,000 again. So overall, the city is sitting very well from a financial position. You received that unmodified opinion and clean audit opinion, opinion. There were no audit adjustments at all in the current year. And we had no uncorrected or past adjustments where we would have suggested a adjustment. There was no, no uncorrected statements either. So from our perspective, everything is going really well, very clean. And staff were all very helpful. <coughs> in Anybody have any questions? Yeah. Gary? I do. Go One, ahead. but I'd like to preface it with, with uh, <coughs> congratulations uh, to the mayor, city administrator, and the staff for running an excellent excellent tight ship very very pleased with that your presentation was very succinct and right on nice job only question i have and it's not germane to this audit uh, what does the state auditor recommend as far as re changing auditors how is there a time every five years every four years I don't know that off the Thumped top you. of my head. Um, if there is, I'd like an answer to that, please. I can, and I can it's not germane to this city or your business. It's it's a private question that I have, and I'm I'm getting in under the freebies, pro bono. 
completely understand. Get back to the, I will get back to Pat. And can, to the administrator, yeah, so but I, I really appreciate that. If if there's a general recommendation from from the uh, governor. Yeah, I can pretty much answer that question for well, you, Gary. Because please uh, change. You know, auditors can be on here for 20 years. Mm -hmm. They can be on here for two years. It is incumbent upon the city to ensure that they're getting the best bang for their buck and, we are. and periodically go out to take new RFPs, which and is we why are, we did and, this year. And, and you and your and, position as mayor, that, that's, I just want to know for my own There's no satisfaction. answer to your question as far as X number of years and then you change. Still want to know what the state auditor recommends. Okay. Thank you. Yep. So, Rebecca, anything? No, I don't have anything. Gary, Jeff, anything? Thanks. No. Michael? I have no questions. Okay. I want to thank you so much. Um, and I do have to give a good shout out to uh, Carrie Jacobson, our financial person, because uh, mm. she's the one basically that is on the front line answering all the questions. Yep. And uh, um, year after year, we have always run a very clean, very succinct audit with, <clears throat> excuse me, with very, very few uh, glitches going on. And I hope your team, because I know your team did very well, and uh, I hope you feel the same way about ours. So it was very, it went yes, very well. Yes, I want to thank you. Um, we do have um, one thing that we do need to uh, follow up on is the. Let's see if I can. It's right at the end here, right? Scroll down. <laughs> Um, 87. Yep, 80, 85. Um, <clears throat> as part of the um, outliers that we had on our audit, we have uh, on page 85 of your packet, you'll find resolution 1908 which is a resolution providing for annual delegation of authority to make electronic fund transfers for mm -hmm. 2019. Um, and this was one of your findings. And so this resolution will authorize uh, the uh, city administrator to do the uh, electronic funds transfers, whereas Minnesota statute 47138 requires the city makes annual delegation of this authority. And that's what this resolution is for. So I will entertain a motion to approve resolution, resolution 1908. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Um, further discussion? Gary, do you want to have anything? No, sir. Okay. Rebecca? No. Gary? No. Michael? No. Okay. Uh, all those in favor of resolution 1908, please say aye. 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 Resolution 1908 is adopted, which closes one of your issues that you had. Uh, so that is done. And this will be done on an annual basis when we do our uh, uh, organizational resolution, which is the first <coughs> resolution we do at every uh, meeting uh, of the year. So this will be included in that resolution. So we will have it ongoing. So we got you fixed. That sounds great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Uh, I think that's, unless anybody wants to go through the entire uh, financial report, I think we're done. <laughs> Please. Yes. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. <sighs> okay, next is the uh, uh, mayor reports. Um, probably one of the most important things that I want to uh, report is that our swimming beach is now open. It is typically closed from November until April 1st. So those people that, wishing, that wish to go swimming can do so at the beach without any problem whatsoever. Well, there might be a slight problem, but that's okay. Um, another thing is I did uh, do is I attended the MPCA awards uh, for uh, our wastewater treatment plant and I received our 37th consecutive wastewater treatment award and uh, this goes to uh, to Joe for operating a wastewater treatment plant with continued success the, uh, mm. uh, this, this being our 38th consecutive award uh, says volumes not only to the staff that uh, um, operated but also I have to give credit 
to the city because we maintain the equipment. Uh, we make sure that they have all the right equipment to utilize, uh, to maintain this uh, awards sequence. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you so much, Joe. Appreciate it. That's really not a easy thing to do every year because if you just miss one data submission, if you have anything out of spec, any time during the year you miss it. And uh, Breezy Point, to the best of my knowledge, is the leader in the number of consecutive awards. Um, you just don't see plants that are operated to the level of ours. So it's another thing that we have to feather in our cap on. Um, on uh, March 26, we had a road, road assessment meeting, uh, and uh, we had a, had a good turnout, a lot of good questions. Uh, the public seemed to understand why we're re uh, requesting this project, um, and we'll be talking about that a little bit later on. And uh, um, the, uh, um, I won't be having any, any office hours on uh, this Wednesday. Normally I have... Uh, uh, office hours on Wednesday mornings from 8 to noon, but uh, because we have a meeting uh, with the Natural Resources Advisory Committee, uh, I will be attending that on uh, uh, this Wednesday morning. Um, also, uh, there is, uh, we did this last year, but uh, I want to put the word out a little bit early so we can get it out in the paper a little bit. We'll be changing our office hours uh, or I mean the, uh, the hours of the uh, city council meeting from seven o'clock to six o'clock during the months of June, July, and August. So we'll get that out and we'll get the uh, uh, information out so that everybody's aware of that. We did this last year and it seemed to be you know, quite successful. Um, we just had a little confusion, confusion last year on getting the word out. So we'll get it out a little bit earlier this year. So be looking uh, ahead to uh, new city council times to take advantage of uh, the extended daylight and, and summer hours. Um, so uh, uh, the rest of the committee uh, reports. Uh, Gary, do you have anything? A couple of things quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, the fly-in, Breezy Point, coming up very soon. Cliff Mueller called me before the meeting and apologized to the council uh, and those here this evening that he was he couldn't make it tonight because he had a couple of things he wanted to share, but everything's uh, coming together very, very nicely. I, I work close with Cliff on that. Uh, of note, and, and we're still waiting on a confirmation, but uh, he's been in touch with the uh, commander uh, of the Grand Forks Air Force Base and also the Duluth uh, fighter uh, interceptor uh, quadrant o over there. And we're hoping, he's hoping, to get um, either a flight, a, a B-52 for a low pass, possibly a B-1 bomber, it depends on what their schedules are, or some F-16s out of Duluth to fly over. So it should be interesting. For, so come one, come all, bring the kids. It's a big deal for them, and we look forward to it. That's it, Ms. Mayor. Okay, thank you. Rebecca, anything? Uh, I don't have much. Uh, we just, we had the... Um, March 21st, the Stay visioning night. plan at the ICE arena, and that went great. We had a lot of really good attendance and um, some coverage in the paper. So <clears throat> thanks for everyone for attending. Thank you, Aaron. <laughs> Gary. Uh, well, only one thing. Is that Re Rebecca brought it up on the 21st. I wanted to compliment uh, Chief Marshman and the police department because for the boxes that all, had all the orange dots in them. Yeah. The one with the police department. Uh, people feel safe in this city, I thought, and it was full. And I thought that had a lot to say about our police mm. department. So thank you. Michael. Um, I <clears throat> am the police liaison, um, as you may yes. know. Um, I actually had the opportunity to participate in a uh, the laser shot training, which is a computer program that simulates, uh, it's projected onto a screen, and you have a um, mock pistol, if you would, and a, and a mock uh, taser. And I went through a number of scenarios um, experiencing um, what they consider real life situations. 
and how quickly uh, things can escalate where you think that you are in control of a situation and how the uh, potential suspect can change dramatically and pull weapons out on you very quickly. Uh, more often than not, uh, my life was jeopardized in the training. Uh, I say this as an untrained professional, but it was very eye-opening on how quick those situations can change and those split-second decisions that they have to go through on a daily basis uh, made me realize more and more about their position. So I, I thank very much to Officer Lorch who allowed me to uh, come in and, and experience that. And uh, it was, like I say, an eye-opening opportunity for that. Okay. And as long as I have you on the spot, we have road committee uh, summary agenda. Uh, do you or Joe want to talk about that? Um, I, I'm more than happy to talk a, a little bit. Okay. Um, Joe and uh, or Patrick can uh, fill in any blanks. Um, we did meet um, for March 14th, and we had a number of discussions. Um, no real action item except for the next item. Um, first off, we did talk about minimum maintenance um, roads and where we're going to go with them. We talked about um, a little bit about our assessment policy. We have some draft changes that we're going to be uh, thrown together as the road committee to present to the council. Um, we do have a project that uh, um, we are in joint efforts with Ideal Township with Asawan and Key Road um, being updated um, and went through some public works equipment, uh, their, um, all their capital improvements and all their equipment that they have, life expectancies, um, etc. So, um, the last item, public works summer hours, we'll discuss next. Okay, and that's where we are because we um, from the Finance Committee, we uh, did look at this, and do uh, you care to uh, add anything more to it, or? Um, I can, well, um, before I move on to, to that action, I'm Joe, did I miss anything highlighting? Patrick, okay. Um, so uh, the next item on our agenda is public works. Um, typical hours are Monday through Friday from 7 to 3.30, and we've uh, been looking at the potential of changing that to four 10-hour uh, days uh, to be from 6 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Uh, this is kind of a trial basis for the summer hours, May 1st through September 30th. Um, and we are going to do split shifts, so it won't be a Monday through Thursday or a Tuesday through Friday. We'll have a staff member every day of the week here. It's just that they'll be working a 10-hour shift on those days. Um, Joe is working with uh, the rest of the public work staff to make it work for everybody and it's something that we are open and considering and seeing how it works out um, to do. Okay. Um, yeah, this has been passed through the Finance Committee and I think personnel even had a chance to look at it. Is that correct? Or? Yeah. Okay. Yes. So it's been through the, the various committees and uh, nobody, none of the committee members see any problem with it. Um, so I'll entertain a motion to allow Public Works to change work hours from to uh, four 10-hour days from May through the end of September. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Uh, further discussion? <coughs> Gary? No, sir. Rebecca? No. Nope. Gary? None. Michael? None. Okay. All those in favor of uh, allowing Public Works to change their hours <coughs> to four 10-hour days, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? The uh, Request is approved. Um, our next item of business um, on the on March twenty sixth was it? I think we had a uh, a, a, a meeting to get public input on the uh, the road project for uh, um, Papago Suffolk. Uh, White Birch uh, Drive uh, for the uh, uh, black topping and the sewer installation. Um, so at this point, uh, we are at the point of uh, going out for uh, uh, the plans and bids. Um, Justin, do you want to uh, fill us in maybe a little bit more at this time? Well, uh, you basically, you know, hit the nail on the head there. We're at the, sta the 
step in the process to um, authorize the production of the plans and specs and that's what we've brought a proposal to the council to consider tonight uh, for WSN to put those together and then we've allowed for uh, 60 days time to complete that and uh, under that schedule it won't be the May council meeting but the June council meeting will have plans and specs ready uh, if you know we're authorized tonight to begin work we will have them ready to begin advertising for bids um, at that June council meeting okay and this is the first step in the whole process where we actually start to expend some uh, some funds uh, we will be expending approximately uh, uh, sixty six thousand dollars to get the plans and the engineering done um, and uh, that will get us up to the point where we will make the decision to uh, uh, we can at that point we'll be able to get a really good handle as to what the costs will be and uh, uh, at that point we'll can make the decision to move forward on it um, this project is being somewhat fast-tracked um, because if we do this all in one shot we can uh, uh, get some economies of scale for doing this whole project all at once um, so we have uh, uh, we are requesting uh, a motion at this point to uh, uh, approve the uh, the contract with uh, uh, Woodset Smith and, and WSN to uh, uh, complete the uh, the plans and the uh, uh, engineering to uh, move forward on this project so I'll move is there a second to that motion second okay uh, further uh, discussion Gary um, I was at that meeting uh, and it was well presented uh, by the engineer very clear uh, and one it's a good project made a lot of sense there was uh, some opposition to it but a very small minority and the benefits far uh, outrule that so I'm all for it Rebecca yeah, I would just say at the, the March 26th meeting, there was great attendance by the city, um, members of the city, and it was great to hear their concerns. And, and again, um, just to echo your comments, uh, Mayor, that, you know, this is just going out, um, moving forward, the bidding process, and that will let us get the bids back and see really what the, the cost will be. Mm -hmm. Gary. Um. Michael? Rebecca stole my comment. <laughs> <laughs> Tom? Yes. If I may on this, um, the next item you have to do is the resolution, but assuming it looks as though you're going to approve this, one thing I would like with the council too, because looking at the timeline, um, we have some easements to obtain. Yes. And rather than wait till after bids are accepted in the end of July, it's a really short timeline. I would ask that the council authorize the engineer to go out and obtain do the survey work and the um, obtaining of the easements. We're working with the city attorney on that. Okay, I thought that was in the, wasn't, wasn't that in the contract? Well, I want to make sure that you understand this. Okay, yes. Immediately, not waiting until July. Okay, I understand. Yes. Um, to, to further elaborate on what uh, Patrick is saying, um, there is a uh, two easements that we have to get. Three. Three easements? Okay. And that's... There's a, yeah, there's actually um, more like four. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> there's, there's a number of easements that we have to get to uh, make this project work solely by gravity. So by getting these easements, then we will be able to gravity feed, and that saves a tremendous amount of cost because we don't have to put in any lift stations or anything like that, and then it uh, makes it... Uh, by doing this, like I say, doing this all at one package and doing it the way uh, it is being proposed, it saves a tremendous mm -hmm. amount of money uh, for the uh, uh, entire project. Uh, so, so keep in mind that uh, we will be going out and obtaining those easements as part, mm -hmm. in, basically in parallel with the getting developing of the plans. So with that in mind, uh, all those in favor of uh, ordering the plans and specifications, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? We will move forward. Um, 
Next item of business is the uh, contract for the uh, our fire services from uh, Pequot Lakes. Um, you actually have, you, so you signed your contract there, you also need resolution 19. Oh, did I miss that? I didn't quite put that on the agenda, so I'll take that responsibility, but we do need to have that resolution also. Okay, did that sneak in there? Okay, I'm mm -hmm. sorry, 1909, yes. Okay, so this, as opposed to just a motion, we need uh, resolution to develop the uh, plans and specifications. So all those in favor, uh, uh, take a, uh, I'll so entertain a motion to, for resolution 1909. So moved. There's a second? I'll second. Okay, um, any discussion on the resolution? Okay, none appearing. Um, the, all those in favor of resolution 1909 to obtain the plans and specifications, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? The resolution 1909 is agreed <clears throat> to. Missed that one. Okay. Um, the uh, next item is the uh, fire contract. We contract with the city of Pequot Lakes for uh, our fire services. And we ha you have the uh, invoice there in front of you. Uh, the contract essentially is based on the usage and the value of the essentially the value of the uh, uh, of the of the city itself. And so uh, uh, there's a formula that they go through to work out our <coughs> shared cost, and uh, that turns out to be where is it? I used to like the... Page 94. 94? Yep. Yes. That's, that's the letter. 95. $92,777.35 is our uh, contract. Um, And so uh, I'll entertain a motion to approve the contract with uh, uh, Pequot Lakes for the fire services <coughs> for 2019 uh, uh, and 20. So moved. There's a second. Second. Uh, further discussion? Gary? No, no, sir. No. Gary? Was that last year, was it 85,000? No, it went up about 3000 this year. Yeah. Before. Okay. All right. All right. It's not that much different. Yeah, it's fine. Michael? I do have a few questions. Um, besides the Pequot Lakes and our location, are there any other um, locations that they house equipment out of? Or is Pequot and Breezy the only two locations? Pequot and Breezy. Breezy and Breezy. Yep. And, you know, with, with us having the facilities right here, which is a great benefit, do... Who pays for that portion of the building that, that the fire equipment is in? Do, are we still absorbed with 100% of the cost of the maintenance of that building? Or does the, do we get a discount because we have that building and we support <coughs> equipment? Or? All City of Breezy Point expense. All City of Breezy Point, so, okay. Our benefit is by having that here and our insurance costs are lower. Right. Okay. So it benefits the entire city. Right. One could make that argument. But it is a significant uh, insurance decrease for us, having that uh, located here. Do they maintain our fire vehicles then? It's their fire vehicle. Their, their equipment. Fire vehicle. Yes. Their equipment. So everything within fire. is theirs, the shell in the building is ours. Pretty much, yeah. yeah. Thank you. You're going to answer your question on page 97. It shows the, yep, it's up there. Our bill last year was 89335 <clears throat> This year we're at 92777 Okay. Not to take away from Michael if you have more questions. No. Okay. Um, all those in favor, uh, I had a motion and second, right? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Okay. All those in favor of approving <coughs> the contract with uh, Pequot yep. Lakes, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? The contract is approved. Um, Next item is we are going to be getting a new squad car. What's going on? There we are. Things are slow. Uh, 
So on page uh, 106 of the packet, you have the uh, uh, basically the specifications uh, invoice for the uh, new squad car. Um, we had tried to order this earlier, but our order got canceled, and so now we have to get the is it 2020 model, 2020 model. Um, and we do get some credit for having uh, mm. our order in early, but uh, having it canceled. Um, and it comes up to a total of uh, $32,186.55. Um, we typically like to rotate our squad cars uh, every six years. Uh, that way we keep ahead of uh, any mechanical problems. Uh, so uh, at this point, I will entertain a motion to uh, approve ordering of the 2020 uh, Explorer SUV for a Mark Squad car for a cost not to exceed $33,000. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Oh. Either one. Um, further discussion? Gary? Yes. Where does it come from, Chief? Does it come from Detroit Lakes or is that where it comes from? Is that guy, guy still got the contract? No. Um, you're referring to it's actually Fergus Hall. Yes, I'm sorry. Thank and you for the they correction. They do not have the contract anymore. This one's uh, heavy. Good. That, that's my only question. Okay. Rebecca, anything? No. Gary? No. Michael? None. All those in favor of um, approving the uh, ordering of the 2020 Explorer, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? We will get the 2020 on order. I, can yes. I ask? I just got one question. I'm sorry. Okay. Back up. How many miles do these cars usually have on them after six years or these vehicles? 100 to 120. That's not bad. Mm -mm. Um, I mentioned earlier that uh, we are going to be meeting with the Crow Wing County Natural Resources Committee on uh, Wednesday, April 3rd. Um, we have been trying to get golf carts, a golf cart permitting process for uh, uh, operating mm. uh, golf carts on the uh, uh, county roads. Um, we can operate them on the city streets. Um, but it would help us tremendously as far as getting them off the shoulders and getting those ditches and stuff that these carts have been wearing along the side. Um, so we are having a presentation. There will be several of us attending this meeting April 3rd at 9.30 at the uh, Land Services Building. Um, I have sent a letter to the, uh, uh, the committee mem members and uh, Patrick has put together a PowerPoint so uh, um, this is why I won't be at the uh, uh, <clears throat> mayor's uh, office on uh, or the mayor's office uh, hours on uh, Wednesday. Um, the next thing is um, city office hours. We are looking at uh, adjusting the hours of the city hall is open uh, on Monday through Friday. It normally is open eight to four thirty, and staff would like to. Uh, uh, close a little thir uh, 30 minutes earlier starting April 15th and uh, they want to try those and we'll uh, uh, discuss this again uh, in October. Um, so far I think uh, it seems like a, a good uh, uh, good thing to do. Give us a little bit more time in the uh, evening. We'll have to play kind of play it by ear um, and so uh, uh, if it if it doesn't work out, we can always change it. But uh, I think at this point, uh, it would be uh, uh, a good thing for the for the staff to have a half hour off uh, during the summer. And so I will entertain a motion to approve the uh, new office hours from uh, eight to four o'clock versus eight to four thirty. So I'll move. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Discussion. Gary. No, sir. Rebecca. No, I was just going to mention they don't really have it. It's not like they get time off. It's just no, that it's they're working more hours during the day. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Gary. No. Michael. Yep. Just to reiterate, it's a technically a trial basis. So if we deem it needed, we can revert I'll back. Change it back. <clears throat> good trial. Okay. Uh, those in favor of uh, changing the office hours to eight to four o'clock versus four thirty, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? Then uh, the new office hours are approved. Um, that completes the uh, uh, agenda items for, for tonight. I will essentially adjourn to the April 3rd Crow Wing County uh, office because we will be having uh, 
uh, probably multiple uh, city council members there, and uh, Patrick wants to say something because he held up his finger. <laughs> the other thing is, I didn't hear back from Sourcewell about the joint meeting or the uh, steering committee meeting. So oh. if either of you did, I'm not then we'll have to either play it by year or schedule it for next month. Okay. That's a good point. So the uh, meeting is temporarily adjourned and we until we uh, reconvene at uh, Land Services uh, where we possibly could have a quorum. So. And then just a reminder about April 17th. Oh, that's right. Yes, I got that marked down here. April 17th, uh, Board of Adjustment meeting. We need, we need to have a quorum there 10 o'clock in the morning. So we will be here to uh, listen to uh, people that want to adjust their tax evaluations. So we are adjourned. Thank you. Thank you all for coming. Stay for Kate.